Today, we're going to be solving this equation. The natural log of x to the power of the natural log of x equals x. Hmm. It looks so ugly, so complicated. So, in our first step, we will substitute. Substitute t for the natural log of x. Then, this equation will look prettier. Our left-hand side will become t to the power of t. What about the right-hand side? x. Okay, we know that the natural log of x is t. So we can get that x is e to the power of t. So now, our right-hand side is e to the power of t. You can see, here t, here t, they are the exponents. Okay, so they are the exponents. Can we actually divide the both sides by e to the power of t? Of course we can. However, on one condition, that is, e to the power of t is not equal to zero. However, we know that e to the power of t is an exponential function, and the range of any exponential function is always positive. So, x is positive. It implies that x should be positive, because e to the power of t is positive. That means now we can divide both sides by e to the power of t. So here we have t to the power of t over e to the power of t. And the right hand side is just e to the power of t over e to the power of t is 1. Then the exponent t can be taken out. t over e all to the power of t equals 1. Now have a good look at this equation. The left hand side has an exponential form, and the right hand side is 1. This 1 is very important. This equation has actually the form of m to the power of n equals 1. This equation. In general, there are three cases. The first one. If m is 1, and n is any real number. Then there will be solutions. Second case. If m is negative 1, now n should be an even number. It can be written as 2k. And it has to be written as 2k, where k is an integer. Then, in this case, there are also solutions, or there is solution. The third case. If our exponent n is 0, however, under one condition, m is not equal to 0. Then, this equation will also have solution. Just like this kind of equations, our this equation can also be examined like this. I like to write it here. The first case, the second case, and the third case. In the first case, it says m is 1. That means the base is equal to 1. So that means t over e equals 1. And then we can get t is actually e. Well, e is a real number. So that means the exponent is a real number. So it implies that t equals e is a solution. What about x? We have to solve for x, not for t. Remember, remember, remember. We did a substitution, and we always have to solve for x for the original variable. Here, we can get x is e to the power of t, e to the power of e. Then, second case. In our second case, that means m is negative 1. So, what does it mean? t over e is negative 1, that means t is negative, uh, negative e. Well, negative e is not an even number. In this case, there aren't any real solutions. There are maybe imaginary solutions. No real solutions. 
Our third case is when t equals 0. The exponent is 0. If t equals 0, we, then we can get that t over e is, of course, also 0. However, when n equals 0, m cannot be equal to 0. Then this equation will have solution. However, here, both the base and exponent are 0, so no solution. Actually, the term 0 to the power of 0 doesn't make any sense. So we've only got one solution to our equation, and this solution is the only real solution. So x is e to the power of e. Do you get it? Do you get the trick? Do you get a key? Subscribe to me for more wonderful questions. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.